Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love is, is it, it's, it doesn't vaunt itself, it's not puffed up. It does not behave itself uh, unseemingly. It seeketh not our own, is not easily provoked. It thinketh no evil. It rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. That's, that's what love is. You see, it says, it beareth all things, believe all things, it hopes all things. The Bible says it endureth all things, and love never fails. You see, and this is, this is the kind of love you got to persevere in whatever you're doing, especially for the kingdom of God. And one of the, one of the, the primary and principal uh, thing about this gospel of Jesus Christ is love. Because the Bible says in 1 John 4, 4, 7 that God is love. And everything that has to do with the kingdom has to do with love. The Bible says here that if you have everything, if you can speak in the tongues of men and angels, you know, and you don't have love, you're nothing. So love is yeah, the main, the principal thing. It's the foundation of what God is all about. And so we we, we, we leave you, uh, we talk here again about uh, love for Christ. That's that love. First of all, you got to have love for Christ. We talked about it in, in John chapter 15 when we talk about that abiding, uh, abiding in the vine. You got to have that priority. Priority, your love for God must be first. First you must have, that's your priority, your love for God. And then after that, you can have your purpose. Your purpose, of course, is to bear fruit as Jesus uh, talks in John 15, 8. And through that intimacy with God, uh, you are able now to exercise the gifts that God has given you that you get through that intimacy. And, and that would involve ministering unto others, helping others, uh, expressing the love of God which is spread abroad in your heart. See, and this is, this is what we have to do. It's so very important. That we understand it. We're coming down to the end of this program. Uh, and I want you to know that this program deals primarily with the ascension of Jesus Christ. And uh, um, it, it also talks about, and John doesn't say much about the ascension, and we'll, we'll probably have to go to another gospel to give you a little account of how that took place. But in the meantime, Jesus is outlining a few things that the disciples must do. In verse 18, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou was young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou hast become old, thou stretchest out thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee, whither thou would not go. You see, Jesus was actually telling Peter of the kind of debt that he would suffer. You see, Peter was crucified upside down. And my friends, again, the Bible says that this spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. Now there's something here that jumps out of the page, and that's the word glorify. Glorify God. You see, Peter is going to glorify God by the way, by the type of death he's going to suffer. You see, now this is important. Peter's death is going to glorify God. You see, he's going to run the way. He's, he's going to complete his course. He's going, to, he's going to go through the persecution. And he's going to glorify God by the death he's going to suffer. My friends, when we die to the world, when we die to sin, we in fact glorify God by this. You see, when we, when we are crucified with Christ, like Paul says, and, 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 and when we become anew, we glorify God. But when we, when we walk back into sin, we put God up as an open shame when we, when we go back into sin. The book of uh, Hebrews talks about it. He who has received the gifts and the power of the age to come, if that man falls away, you know, he puts Christ to an open shame. You don't give God the glory for this. You see, but when you die, when you die to sin and when you die to the world, then God gets glory. You see, and this, and you know this, and here's what here's what Jesus said. 
he said all of this to Peter. He said to him, uh, uh, he makes a, a reference when he was small, when he was young, you know, you put your clothes on, you do what you want to do. When you're young, you do things that are, uh, you know, you do all kinds of crazy things. You know, but when you give your life to Christ, that's a different story. Now, the Holy Spirit is in control. No longer you. It is no longer you that live. But you live by the fate of the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you. It's no longer you. The Bible says in Philippians 2.13, it is no longer you. But it is God in you that's doing the willing and enabling you to do all the good things. You see, and he will continue this. Philippians 1.6 says, you know, that he who has started a good thing in you will continue it until the day of Jesus Christ. And he says to him, follow me. My friend, I want you to watch something here. Jesus tells him everything first. And then he says, follow me. Peter could say, well, look, I don't want to follow you because, you know, uh, the things that I have to go through here is just a little bit too much, Lord. And I, I don't think I can do it. You have a free will. You're a free moral agent. And you can do what you want. This is what Adam and Eve did. They're free moral agents. And even though God told them, don't eat of this particular tree, they just still went ahead and do it. You see? But there's a, there's a consequence for disobedience. The Bible says in, in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. You will surely die. You wouldn't die immediately, physically, but spiritually, instantly, you're spiritually dead because now you become separated from God. The worst thing that can ever happen. Jesus in the garden, just before the crucifixion, he said, my God, is there another way that we can do this? Nevertheless, not my will. And I said before, he wasn't concerned about the crucifixion. He was concerned about the separation. The separation from God is hell itself, my friend. You don't want to be separated from God. So he said,